Senator Whitcoast to be followed by Senator Boucher. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, before I begin my comments, I, I want to offer my thanks to Senator Harper and Senator Daley for all the work that they did in their uh, budget committees and all the other committees uh, around the circle that spoke of their particular areas. Um, it's not an easy task that was before them, and they brought forth a product that they believe will set our state on the right course. And I will respectfully come in from a different perspective, but I wanted to thank them for their time that uh, they gave to this legislature. You know, today, May 2nd, 2011, is Tax Freedom Day in the state of Connecticut, where we've worked as individuals and taxpayers to pay back our federal tax dollars, our state tax dollars, and our local tax dollars. Today begins the day that we get to enjoy our wages for our own individual purposes, whether that be to pay off a mortgage, pay off student loans, go on a family vacation, pay our electric bills, food. But it won't be that next year, not with the budget bill that's before us. We're going to extend way past May 3rd. This process began in February when the governor had proposed his initial budget and then began the 17 city and town tour listening tour to hear from the folks that are going to be most affected by the budget. And he heard quite a bit. And in fact, I heard from many constituents, as many of the people around the circle heard from their constituents by email, phone calls, or personal contacts. And the message, Mr. President, that I got was a resounding cut spending. Do not increase my taxes. We cannot afford it. We've all heard the expression, silence is deafening. We should all be deaf on the silence in this budget that speaks to the cuts in spending versus the increase in taxes. We talk about jobs being priority number one, the economy number one, but when we look at some of the taxes that we're passing in this bill, that's not the message that we're sending out to our corporate world. Our corporate taxes, which was due to sunset at 10% in 2011, is going up to 20% for two years. Other bills that are before the legislature are mandates upon our businesses. When I look at a budget bill that's before me, I always look at how I can talk to the folks back home in words that they'd understand. And sometimes we receive emails and phone calls based on the snippets that are reported in the newspapers. And it's a headline grabber and all of a sudden people start generating phone calls saying they don't like that or they support that and we need to change things. But they haven't been given, they, the taxpayers in the state of Connecticut, given enough time to see what's really in this bill and give us the opportunity to report back to them what's contained within this bill. I remember reading in a newspaper article a few weeks ago saying that we're taxing people that are having a wedding. Their, their wedding gown is going to be taxed under the luxury tax because it's more than $1,000. Well, I say to you, the cost of a wedding has increased tremendously if we add in all the other taxes that apply. The cabaret tax, if you have your wedding in a hotel, is going up by 3% if you have alcohol. And then if you want to spend your honeymoon night in the hotel, you've just increased your cost of your room tax by 3%. Sometimes we don't look at things in a simple manner, but we have to pay them in a simple manner. When we talk about corporate taxes, sales and use, luxury, excise, excise taxes, people are confused. They don't know the lingo and the jargon that we use around the circle. But if you say to them, hey, guess what? If you drive a car that has, operates on diesel gasoline, you're going to be paying three cents more a gallon. 
The truckers certainly know that. Or what about the folks that feel that they need a security blanket so they offer up a service so in case they break down on the side of the highway, they can call somebody and be towed. Well, that price is going to go up now because we have a tax on that that we never had before for roadside assistance. And then, heaven forbid, if the car is involved in an accident and has to go into the body shop for a while, a couple weeks, we have to rent a car. Now that tax is going to be 9.5%, over 9.5%, or a little under 9.5% to rent a car as long as it's under 30 days. People don't realize things until it impacts you on a daily basis. And they will. We're going through so many different types of taxes, I'm concerned that one day we'll tax the air that we breathe. And I've got to check because I'm wondering if somebody wants to go and rent an oxygen container, is that considered medicine over the counter? Because if it is, we've just taxed the air that you breathe in this state. And it's a shame as we go through our lives providing for our spouse and our family, and we want to pass on something to our children, that there's a tax that says that if the value of our property is X amount of dollars, we're going to be taxed heavily over that just to go to the state of Connecticut. And the kicker, the final coup d'etat, is we've increased the cremation fee. Can you believe that? A 300% increase in the cremation fee? Your, your, your last goodbye from the state of Connecticut as a tax. Now, there's some things that I don't even know. As you all know, I'm in law enforcement as a profession. As I was going through the budget, I was trying to rack my brain as to when this would come into play. And I, for the life of me, I couldn't think of an example. So I, I guess I'll have to ask, uh, Mr. President, through you to Senator Harp, Section 136, which speaks about the electronic inspection of VIN numbers, uh, there'll be a charge of $10 now where there wasn't one before. Uh, if she could provide an example of when that would take place and where that would take place. Through you, Mr. President. Senator Harp, um, Senator Whitcoe is asking for an example of when a $10 fee to electronic VIN numbers would take place. Thank you very much. Through you, uh, Mr. President, I'm going to yield to Senator Daly. Senator Daly, if you care to accept the yield. Thank you very much, Mr. President, I will. Um, that goes into effect July 1st with the new budget. Senator Whitcoast. Thank you, Mr. President. And if, if Senator Daly could provide an example of when somebody would have to go have their, um, or when they may have their VIN number electronically inspected, and who would perform that duty? Through you, Mr. President. Senator Daly. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I, I don't know that detail. Senator Whitcoast. Thank you. Uh, through you, Mr. President, is there a number of revenue gained from that section in the budget bill? Through you, Mr. President. Senator Daly. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, there is a revenue increase from a new fee, and in total, um, fines, rents, and escheats are $126.5 million in the first year, and 119.4. No, 119.4 in the first year of the biennium, 121.7 in the second. Senator Whitcoast. Thank you, Mr. President. It's very difficult for me to understand a section of a bill if I ask specifically could I have an example of when something like this would take place and how that money would be generated and 
a satisfactory answer isn't given, uh, Mr. President. I, I, when we're talking of uh, a million dollars, um, and I, I sat long and hard in the caucus room, and I went online to see if I could find an example of where that would take place or, or how that would take place, and I couldn't find it. And that concerns me that there's uh, money in our budget that's being counted towards revenue that uh, I wish somebody out there in the real world would say, this is what we do and this is what it's for, and then we could debate the merits of the $10 or not. Um, through you to Senator Daley, Mr. President, we often talk about rating dedicated funds and I'm wondering through you, the $5.6 million which is coming out of the voting account to go to the general fund, and that's used for folks that register their, their boats and vessels. Uh, the explanation was for boating laws and pollution laws to enforce those. Uh, how, what kind of impact would that have on the state as far as boating laws and pollution laws go? Through you, Mr. President. Senator Daly. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, first of all, I apologize for not having a sufficient answer. I am sure that if I did, you'd be voting on the budget. And um, <laughs> that fee is coming out, and it's to be, the work is to be assumed by DEP within their budget. Senator Whitcoast. Thank you, Mr. President. If the DEP is to do that work now through their existing budget, then what was the $5.6 million uh, that was going to uh, that cost for previously? Why do we need the additional $5.6 million for that uh, stated purpose? Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Daly. Thank you very much. Um, just so that it's a cleaner budget and DEP is responsible for its responsibility within its existing budget. Senator Whitcoats. To you, Mr. President, today, if I registered my boat, I would pay a fee and we go into a DEP DMV account. And that account is used to pay somebody to go out and enforce voting laws, of which we've recently seen to pass new ones every, every legislative session, and also to pass some pollution laws, maybe. Um, has to do with uh, illegal dumping or things in our waterways. And now those fees that are going to do that are being removed and they're going into the general fund of the state of Connecticut for any obligation that we pay out of the, out of the general fund. And my question is, if we needed the funds in there previously to do the work, then why don't we need the funds in there today to do the work? For you, Mr. President. Senator Daly. Thank you very much, Mr. President, um, because I think there is an underlying policy implication that the work of a department should be done within its budget, not by the addition of other fees. Senator Whitcoast. Thank you. Then if, if it should do, be done within its budget, uh, Mr. President, why is that uh, charge just eliminated if they can do it within their budget? For you, sir. Senator Daly. I'm not clear on the question. Why is the charge eliminated if they can do it within their budget? That would seem to be the answer. Senator Whitcoff. Thank you. Well, we're still collecting the, the charge. Now we're, we're using it for general obligations into the general fund. So if, if it should be done within the department, why don't we just eliminate the charge for the registration of your vessel? Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Daly. Thank you very much, Mr. President, because that's not what we're intending to do. We're intending to collect that and deposit that money in the general fund. Senator Whitcoast. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. If somebody could, and I'm not sure who I should direct the, the question to, I didn't understand the admissions tax uh, in the budget, and it says it eliminates the exemption. And if I could just get a better explanation uh, of that, I'd appreciate it. And I'm not sure who to direct that question to. Senator Daly, if you care to respond. Thank you, Mr. President, and through you, Mr. President. Uh, Senator Wickos, would you be able to be more clear about that or tell me what section it's in? Senator Wickos. Just a moment, please. Uh, 
Through you, Mr. President, Section 105. Senator Daly. Thank you, sir. If we might stand at ease for a minute, because what I have... We'll stand at ease. Senate will be in order. Senator Daly. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I guess I again need clarification. Did you say emissions or admissions? Admissions. Oh, okay, fine. <laughs> um, and the question... We're not taxing emissions now, too, are we? <laughs> <laughs> and the question? Uh, if you could just explain that section to me. I, I was confused as to, uh, in the summary we received in OLR, there were some venues that were, uh, the exemption was eliminated, and then some specific events. For example, the New Britain Stadium exemption was eliminated, as were the New Britain Rock Cats games. And I, I didn't understand how that worked. Senator Daly. Thank you very much, Mr. President. There was, and is today, an exemption from tax on the admission. I think at the Rock Cats games, it's $20 now and there will be a tax on that and I should just add quickly thanks to the attention of the Rock Hats owner this was changed to be next January because many of these venues have sold seasons tickets already Senator Whitcoast thank you Mr. President I just trying to find my part in the bill I thought it had something to do with uh, only there was only an exemption if it had a limit of five dollars So if, uh, for you, Mr. President, the exemption is only removed if the charge is not more than $5. So if the ticket price is more than $5, then the exemption goes away. Is that correct for you, sir? Senator Daly. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, sir. Senator Whitcoats. Thank you. And through you, Mr. President, are the locations enumerated in this bill, are those all of the locations in the state of Connecticut that currently get the exemption or that, were there some left out so that we'll still receive the exemption? Senator Daly. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And through you, Mr. President, um, none were left out unless there's an error, but they, okay. they enumerated all of the locations in which this will apply. Senator Whitcoast. Yeah, thank you, and I thank Senator Daly for her answers. You know, one of the debates that we... we have and will be having uh, later on in the General Assembly has to deal with energy and there's a provision in the bill today before us on electric generation tax and there were a variety of bills that were have, are floating around the legislature and we're hearing about that each of those from our constituents this bill in particular section 104 of the bill provides for uh, one quarter of a cent tax on electrically on electricity generated in our state that's uploaded to the grid. I have some concern with that because that's going to have a direct impact on our electric rates in the state of Connecticut because the margin of profit for the natural gas fired plants is so small that any increase, Mr. President, that they get will certainly be passed on to the consumer. And we're realizing savings right now in our electric bills because the cost of the raw material, which is the natural gas used to make electricity, has decreased. And through this provision in this bill, we're going to be taxing the very same substance that we need, which we mostly use, get most of our power from, at 25 quarter of one cent. By my calculation, we have close to 60 something, 64 percent of our power coming from gas-fired plants. And this will, this tax will, 
unequivocally raise our electric rates. Uh, through you, Mr. President, to Senator Daley, if she could offer some comments as to how we chose to leave some of these electric generation plants in there and how we chose to leave some of them, exclude some of those. Through you. Senator Daley. Thank you very much, Mr. President, and through you, Mr. President. Um, we did not intend to leave any out, and I'm very glad you brought up this subject because Dominion has assured the governor in writing that they will not raise taxes during this two-year tax, uh, and we're hoping everybody else will follow their lead. Senator Whitcoast. Thank you. Through our, uh, without getting into a lengthy uh, discussion at this point of the evening, um, it would be very difficult for Dominion to do that, but it wouldn't be difficult for the natural gas folks uh, to do that. Uh, I read the bill that there are exceptions to the tax, and those would be the fuel cell, solar, and wind. And through you, uh, Mr. President, is it your belief, uh, Senator Daly, that those should not have been uh, exempted, that all, all generators should have received the uh, one quarter of a cent tax? Senator Daly. Thank you very much, and through you, Mr. President. Um, no, I do believe those should be exempt, and I didn't realize that that was the sort of thing you were talking about. Those are things that we're trying to stimulate at this time. Senator Whitcoats. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank uh, Senator Daly for her response. I just want to, want two more questions or comments, I should say. As the budget debate moves forward and we go back to our constituents, and as they, they may not see an immediate increase in things, but they soon will from all of the tax increases on our, our licensing going through DMV, license renewals to the nursing homes, to a hospital, the income tax, cabaret tax, folks are going to start wondering, well, what is not going to be taxed and what are you doing with the money in Hartford? And it's very difficult to explain to them that we have an inability to cut anything. And I think that, and I hope, that negotiations proceed on a path to get us to that position. And I know I've heard from folks that there are things to cut. There are places to cut. Because it's the worker bees that know the best. They know their business inside and out. And I'm not so sure that we found many of those examples in this budget bill before us. And I say to you, Mr. President, that there's going to be anger in the streets if and when this budget bill becomes law. The folks in Connecticut will not be happy. I'm not happy. I think we're doing a disservice to our constituents. I think we need to go back, sharpen our pencils, and cut, and cut, and cut. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator. Senator